are listening to The Stick and Hack Show, a show about golf and life from a stick and a hack. Now, here is your host, Adam Grubb and Mike Ryan. All right, everybody, welcome in. It is The Stick and Hack Show. I'm your host, Adam Grubb. The hack, that's Mike Ryan. The stick, Mike, what is up? Not much, as usual. <laughs> That's golf season. I mean, you're, you're yeah. going to be playing golf. It's you gotta, golf. Things are happening. Yeah. Life's coming back together a little bit. Yeah. It's, right? uh, we're, we're almost there. All right. Good. We're almost, it's almost summer. Uh, next show, if you could do me a favor, and I need uh, two things that are different when I, when I ask that question. Two okay. different responses. Sure. And then I'll pick which one I like. Okay and good enough will be what you come back with. That's probably it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, we got a great show for the Stick and Act show, quite possibly the greatest golf show in the free world with the greatest golf club in the world without the course. We have Morgan Pressel on the show today, pro golfer on the LPGA Tour, broadcaster, philanthropist, teen superstar, and now a guest on the Stick and Hack show. Morgan will join us here in just a little bit. Uh, Mike, first up, the stories of youth phenoms. If you came of age in the late 1990s like we did, we had uh, an, even a passing interest in tennis. Uh, Andre Agassi was the man. Uh, but you knew that Pete Sampras was king of the sport. Sampras' dominance, particularly at Wimbledon, was equal parts impressive and intimidating, which made Federer's 2001 victory all more shocking. Just 19 at the time, Federer outlasted Sampras in five sets, besting a man many felt was invincible on grass. Though Federer would lose to Tim Henman in the next round, the breakthrough represented a change in the guard as Sampras would win only one more Grand Slam title, the 2002 U.S. Open, and from 2003 to 2009, Federer would win six of seven Wimbledon crowns. And at the time they faced off in 2001, Sampras' name was thrown around as the best player of all time. That is no longer the case. Roger Federer, who was 19 years old and was a absolute superstar on the tennis court and still to this day is, is somebody to, to be reckoned with. Do you, yeah. remember, do you remember those days? Absolutely. Uh, you know, Federer is, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's the best. He's, he is the best. He's, he's amazing. The best. He's amazing. He's a, he's a pretty good golfer, if I remember right. Is he really? I think so. I think he's, pretty, he's a decent golfer. Uh, speaking of youth phenoms, Pele announced himself to the world at the 1958 World Cup at the tender age of 17. In that tournament, he became the youngest goal scorer in World Cup history, the youngest player to notch a hat trick in World Cup history, and the youngest player to both play in and score in a World Cup final. All of those records, Mike, still stand to this day. And it's hard to imagine them being broken anytime soon or maybe ever. He scored his first goal for the Brazilian national team when he was 16. It should not need to be said that a man who is still considered by most one of the greatest players of all time would go on to pile up more accolades as he got older. Pele won two more World Cups, becoming the only man in history to win three. We then move to Michael Phelps, already known to most after qualifying for the 2000 Summer Olympics at age 15, but it was at the 2004 Olympics in Athens where he really made his mark. At 19... Phelps bagged six gold medals to go along with two bronze, and he fell just one gold short of matching Mark Spitz's seven at the 1972 Summer Olympics. Phelps won four individual titles during the games, and by the end, he was arguably the biggest star from the entire American contingent. He would go on to dominate the sport for over a decade, winning a record eight gold medals at the 2008 Beijing Games and setting world records in seven of his eight victories. Retiring, coming back, retiring again, coming back and uh, is still, to this day, and probably forever, one of the most decorated Olympians of all time. And he did it at uh, 15 years old. Yeah, he's, he was ridiculous. He's, uh, and he's, actually, he's probably one of my favorite Olympians of all time, yeah. Michael Phelps. He's also a golfaholic, for sure. Yeah, he is. He's huge into the game. I, I, I love like, how you're bringing this back to golf, because at one point I forgot this was a golf show. It's a golf show. I'm just, you know. <laughs> I'm just trying to so thank just, you. just trying to keep the relevance. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. You're, you're, that's the one thing you do <laughs> is bring relevance back to this. Uh, now, this list of young phenoms would not be complete, of course, without TW, Tiger Woods, who didn't turn professional until age 20, but by then had already piled up plenty of amateur accolades as well as more buzz than any golfer in recent memory. Woods won uh, numerous national junior tournaments in his teenage years, including the U.S. Junior Amateur at 15, 16, and 17, and the U.S. Amateur in 1994 at age 18. Woods went on to win the U.S. Amateur two more years, becoming the only player to win the event three times in a row. Woods also took part in the 1995 Masters at 19 years old and was the only amateur to make the cut, finishing 41st. So that leads us to our guest today, Mike. Morgan Pressel, LPGA golfer, broadcaster, philanthropist, and one of the youngest players ever to qualify for the U.S. Women's Open at the age of 12. Morgan Pressel joins the Stick and Hack Show. Morgan, how are you? 
I'm great. How are you doing? We're doing great. Thanks for joining us here. Uh, so you heard that that list of, of young phenoms. And I know at the time you weren't probably thinking, and maybe even still to this day, that you were a young phenom and, and, and piling up accolades early in your career. But, but that is the case. And at age 18, you won your first professional tournament on the LPGA. What do you think about when you go back to that time and, and in your life, just 12, 13 years ago, as, as your feelings and, and, and the sport itself and what it brought you? I mean, first off, to be mentioned alongside those uh, names that you listed, I don't. That's that's quite some elite company. I don't know if I quite belong there, but <laughs> it's. Um, I mean, what incredible athletes and superstars in their sport who obviously got. off. I mean, you know, for me, I was just I was just a young golfer, somebody who loved to play golf, somebody who, um, I guess was pretty good at it. <laughs> Um, you know, when you're, I, I always say that young kids like to do things that they're good at. That's kind of what, um, uh, what encourages them to continue. You know, if things are really challenging for a child. Usually they, they don't pursue it. But for me, golf came relatively naturally. And, uh, my, my grandfather was a huge influence in me in, in my golf game, especially got me, um, into the game made sure that I got great instruction as a young kid, encouraged me to do things like try to qualify for the women's open. Um, when we were playing a practice round for the qualifier and I, I remember, you know, what, what is this for? And he said, Oh, it's a qualifier for the women's open. Like, why am I playing in that? And he's like, Oh, just for some experience. And you know, that was, he probably thought in the back of his mind that maybe I could do it. I don't know if I really thought that I could, but went out there and, um, and played great. And you talk about, um, young phenoms in tennis too. My uncle is Aaron Crickstein, who still holds the record as the youngest to win an ATP tournament at 16 years old. And he caddies for me in the qualifier for the U S women's open oh, that's when awesome. I was 12. So that was also pretty special. That's awesome. Very nice. Morgan, during yeah. your during your amateur career, uh, you won eleven AJGA titles, uh, including all five AJGA Invitationals. You know what did that success do for your confidence and your love for competitive golf? Well, I mean, I think the AJGA is just uh, an incredible platform for young junior golfers um, to have that opportunity. I actually they they've changed the rules a little bit, but I was able to play in the Women's Open before I was able to compete in an AJJ event because at the time the rule was you had to be 13 to compete, um, in an AJJ event. And, but just the platform that they have to help it, not just, not just your golf game, but create an, a, a wonderful person through the game of golf. I think you see that with all young juniors who come through the AJGA. And, and of course that's where the best players go to play. So for me, for my confidence, um, being able to win a lot of AJJ events. I mean, I still, you know, remember my first few victories on the AJGA and that was, those are all important stepping stones. Uh, you know, your career is always made up of little goals and things like that. And, you know, you want to win for me, it was, I wanted to win an AJJ event and, you know, you want to win a major, then you want to win player of the year and so on and so forth. And, and to be able to accomplish those things um, as a, a young junior playing against, honestly, against a lot of the players that I'm still competing against on the LPGA tour. I mean, I think that says a lot about the talent that goes through the AJGA. Um, it, it was, it was a huge moment for me in my career. Can you imagine when you did qualify for the U S open at the age of 12 and that was uh, said to the, uh, to, to the open uh, the people that they said, wait, well, hold on. How old is she? Uh, she what? She's 12. Uh, were, you, were you even aware of what was happening and how monumental and amazing. I can't believe that you would be. You're 12. My, my, my kid can barely even open up her iPad uh, for school and you're out there in the, in the U.S. Open. How is that possible and where, were you, where was your head at during that time frame? Well, I mean, I was a young kid who, who probably just didn't know any better and, and ignorance is bliss in that, in that situation. I mean, I certainly noticed the tremendous attention, uh, a lot of the media, you know, like when I went to school the next day, I was in seventh grade, you know, I went to school the next day, I was 
uh, uh, pretty much on the front of all the local newspapers. So, you know, that was kind of just a total whirlwind for me. And then to be at the Women's Open, competing against the players that I had looked up to my entire life, that that was really cool. I remember I just wanted to sit in the locker room. Just I didn't want to leave. Like, I didn't want to go home when the day was over. Like, I just wanted to sit and see who else would walk through and who else I could talk to. And Because, I mean, I'm not shy. <laughs> I'm not afraid to talk to people. But, uh, I mean, now I look at 12-year-olds and I'm like, wow. Sometimes when I think about, you know, I look at another 12-year-old and, and you know, even think Lucy Lee and Lexi Thompson, who were both younger than I was. Uh, when they first qualified for the Women's Open, and you're like, wow, that's really young. Now looking back at it, I don't know. I didn't think that then, but well, now that, I definitely do. That's a good point because you held the record for youngest to qualify for the U.S. Open for about six years, and then Lexi came in and, and, and took over that, that mantle. But that had to be a little annoying because any, nobody likes their records broken, but also pretty exciting for you when it comes to uh, the youth movement in, in golf. And I think that leads leads us right to Mike's yeah, question. Yeah, I mean, are you excited about the movement that's happening in golf with, with the youth right now? And, you know, what would you, what would you tell a 12-year-old today about about the journey they're getting ready to go on in golf. Definitely. I think you see it across all sports. I mean, you see kids in, in middle school, especially potentially even elementary school, very focused on a singular sports where I feel like that really um, didn't used to happen in the past, but you know, they're, they're getting great, uh, great coaching, um, great inspiration. And, I think great inspiration from LPGA tour players, especially um, specifically in women's golf. It's one of my favorite parts of my job is to see all the young girls that come out because that was me. I was one of those young girls out um, watching LPGA before, before I qualified, before I was able to play alongside them. I was also out as a spectator wanting autographs and all, and all of that. So um, getting to meet these young kids and then watch them progress, watch just them coming out to an LPJ and that inspire them to want to go play more golf. I think that's um, definitely one of my favorite parts about my job. And, and you, you see it on tour. You see it every year. The future of the game is so bright. There's more young girls getting involved. It's the fastest growing section of the game. And I'm really excited to see what the future holds in the next, you know, 10, 15, 20 years with, with this real youth movement and encouragement of young girls, you know, golf is cool. I would say when I was, I mean, it, it wasn't that long ago, but I guess it was almost 20 years ago now, you know, when I was young, golf, golf wasn't as cool for a young girl um, to do it, I think, as it is now, which is awesome. Yeah, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a second, because that, that's one of the, the great points of, of the game today. Um, but I, I, we had a conversation with uh, Susie Whaley uh, a couple weeks ago for the Business of Golf podcast uh, here on the Stick and Act Network. And uh, I said something, because I have girls, and I said, you know, I, I, I would love it if my girls were interested in golf. And um, Susie put me in my, spa in my place pretty quickly. She said, just take them golfing. She's like, don't wait for them to, to have an interest in, in something. You, you just take them and have them around the game and have them a part of that process. And Mike, that's how you started. You were just around your dad. You were just around the, the club and, and, and playing golf. And it, it, it struck me. First of all, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, that's pretty dumb. I, I'm, I, I should just take them um, and, and not tell them where we're going. <laughs> just show up here. You sit, sit in the cart. We're going to play golf. Uh, and just have them around the game. And it's, it is that simple. To get, to get kids interested in anything, they have to try it and they have to be a part of it. And, uh, and I think that's, that's a, a great point. What personality trait, Morgan, uh, and we're talking with Morgan Pressel of the LPGA here on the Stick and Act Show. Morgan, what personality trait do you have in your life, your personal life, that you feel is a major strength in your golf life? Ooh, that's a tough question. Um, I mean, I'd say it's, it's a blessing and a curse. It helps me and it hurts me both, but uh, a little bit of perfectionism uh, that I have um, definitely in pretty much everything that I do. I'm, I'm, I'm highly self-critical, which is helpful when you want to make real change and you need to look, uh, you know, as pretty much a, very analytical brain at your golf game and what you can improve on. But then I, I'd say it also is a little bit detrimental when sometimes I am definitely too hard on myself. So uh, it's a little bit of both, <laughs> if that makes sense. There's nothing, um, you know, I, I have a hard time turning off my brain. So where it works, 
where it helps me in some areas of my game, you know, sometimes I got to let things go a little bit easier and always working on those kinds of things. One might call that the stick and hack approach. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. Adam. It's very true. I can actually, I can relate to that. Right. Oh, bit. you can. Yeah. hundred yeah. yeah. percent. Totally. Because I've, I've played, played with Mike multiple times uh, against his will, but I have played with, <laughs> with him and, and his, his brain is very perfectionist in, in even the, sh and you see this on the, on the LPGA and PGA, yeah. they're, they're five yards off or, you know, a yard off. And, and it's like they, they hit it in the water and a hosel rocket. <laughs> and, but in, in reality, they had a, a, a perfect spot to hit it and they didn't. And that was a failure in, 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 in their minds. It is, it's fascinating to watch really good golfers, uh, their misses and how frustrating it is for them. But you, with, speaking of the stick and hack approach, that does help you though at sometimes just to go okay well that was not a stick shot but it's good enough and i can now i can hit a 20 footer for for still get birdie you still have to have some sort of of balance there in that in that middle do you have that yeah i mean golf is that is that mental balance it's more mental than it is physical i think and and uh i always say it's a game of misses it's not necessarily how good your great shots are it's it's how far off so when you do miss it, you still have a 20 footer and, and, or are you hitting it in the water? Are you hitting it out of bounds? And, you know, those obviously escalate your score escalates a little bit quicker when you hit those types of shots. But you know, when you, when you hit it, just miss the green and to the bunker, you just say, Hey, you know, enjoy the next challenge. Next challenge is, can I hit, can I hold a shot? Can I, can I still make birdie from here? If it's a really challenging shot, how do I, how do I give myself the best opportunity to make par? And that's just, um, trying to have more of a, positive mentality as opposed to a, you know, negative, woe is me. And, but the better your misses are, the easier it is to have that kind of mentality. Yes. Mike, my, 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 sorry. My next thought, whenever the, oh, okay. the green, the green side bunker happens is can I not scald this into the road? <laughs> can I, at, at the very least, All right, well, we'll get you a bunker. Lesson. Yeah, yeah, at see, the very exactly. least, leave exactly. it in the bunker exactly. as opposed to the skull. Yeah. You, Morgan, you talked about the next challenge. And so that kind of brings me to the topic. Tell us about your new contract with NBC and the and the Golf Channel as a broadcaster. And oh, uh, that's pretty personal. You're asking for the like the contract negotiations and how much he's making. No. Oh, okay. What do you need? <laughs> What's <laughs> relax? Wait, excuse me. My question. <laughs> what? Can you email us your bank statement? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What, what's the uh, What's the easiest part and the hardest part uh, of this of this new venture for you? Well, I don't know if there is an easy part since it's also brand new to me and I'm really just trying to soak it all up and, and learn as much as I can. Um, I say the hard part is trying to come up with something coherent to say when the red light's on, you know, when the camera's rolling and, and you've got to, and you've got to react quickly, um, to what you see, you know, figure out, I'm figuring out the timing I'm figuring out even, uh, working with different people week to week can be a challenge, you know, um, different hosts or different, um, on course or different producers or whatever it might be, um, learning everybody's different style and, and how you can best work together as a team to create an interesting broadcast. Um, I'd say, you know, working golf, I, I do know golf. I know the game. I, I know what it's like to be in those positions under pressure, having to hit the shot. And, you know, so I just try to rely on those experiences and, and <laughs> sometimes as things, words come out of my mouth, I'm like, Oh no, why did I say that? Can I bring that back to you? You know, it's been, um, so it, it's just, it's been an interesting learning experience. It's definitely stressful. You know, live television has, uh, is very interesting and fast paced and, and very intense. And I'm just, really trying to enjoy the process and learn as much as I can and, and continue to improve. I know that I'm going to, I mean, just like in golf, I know that I'm going to make the mistakes. I'm not going to be perfect every broadcast or probably any broadcast, even though I'd like to be, um, but just try to try to learn as much as I can. Um, and keep improving. Sounds very much like my experience on the Stick and Hack show every week. <laughs> uh, 
uh, Morgan, <laughs> when, when you think about the live TV and you, that is a TV broadcast of golf, but the, the reporters and the on course reporters and broadcasters, it's like radio. You're not seeing anybody. You don't have, you're not getting cues. You're not, you're trying to fit in some sort of semblance of a, of a point or a, a take on, on a specific shot, their lie, what they should do, what, what issues they're going to have and not being able to really be directed of like, Hey, it's your, here, here you go. It's your turn. It is very on your feet and, and audio cues of, of the different hosts. And Hey, what do you got down there? And what does the lie look like? And you have to be ready at all times because anything could happen as it does in golf. That's probably one of the most challenging things I would think of in, in just trying to find your way in, in a, as a broadcaster in that dance of the back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. On course, on course is different because you don't have a screen. You can't see what the viewer is actually seeing. Like um, people in the booth would be able to actually see the, the feed. So, you know, the producer and the host will throw the show to you. And, you know, as on course, you kind of only have five to eight seconds for the most part to come up with a, an idea about the shot, about the player, about the situation and, and just really react. And then sometimes, sometimes you're ready. You have like all this information in your head and you're ready to go and you know exactly what you want to say. And then they don't come to you and you're like, you know, throw me the ball. I'm ready. <laughs> and so it's uh, just kind of figuring all that out and, and being patient out there and um, just learning, learning when to chime in really. I think uh, something that might surprise people, and I don't know if this is true. I saw this and I, and I see it every now and then, and, and hopefully I'm, I'm not showing my denseness here, but of all the technology on the golf course, and all the shot tracking and all the ability, uh, the way that the broadcast teams find out what club is being used is typically the caddy uh, showing uh, an eight or a four or showcasing the caddy to the reporter uh, <laughs> uh, of what club is being used. Is that true? That is correct. And the pro so this is another thing that I'm learning is how close or how far to stand from the player. And, uh, you know, sometimes... I, I feel more comfortable standing further away because I don't want to distract the player, you know, when I'm whispering into the microphone. And then when I'm standing that far away, I can't see what the caddy's flashing me, what, what, <laughs> what numbers on their fingers. So sometimes I just am like, you might not hear a club from me. That's just because I literally cannot see it. <laughs> they're, they're hitting anything between a five and an eight iron. Deal with that. Um, yes, I'm where, not sure. Something there. <laughs> Morgan Pressel is the guest here on the Stick and Axe Show. Morgan, where do you see women's golf going in the next few years? And are you super excited about the personalities and the roster of golfers that are currently on the LPGA today? Absolutely. I mean, we have some real superstars on the LPGA. I mean, the Corda sisters uh, are definitely, uh, you know, the mo one of the most interesting duo to watch on tour for sure. And, and they've been a uh, in contention every week this year, which has been awesome. Um, Lydia Ko winning for the first time in, in three years was, I think resonated with a lot of players out on tour. I know it resonated with me. And, uh, you know, we talked about the youth movement where there's a lot of really incredible young players coming out uh, and that have joined the tour in the last few years. And of course, uh, we have a big hire to make at the LPGA with a new commissioner. So I think, um, that in the next few years will be interesting as well to see the direction that the new commissioner takes the tour. Obviously Mike Wan has done an incredible job over the last 11 years and uh, you know, we, we just got to continue to roll with that momentum and continue to increase viewership, continue to continue the outreach as we've tried. I mean, I don't know if you've seen the hoodie for golf, um, social, social push that we've been making that uh, we has, has worked really hard to put together and, and get influencers outside of golf to promote the LPGA while raising money uh, in the name of Renee Powell. So it's, we've just trying all different sorts of ways to get more people involved in, in the LPGA and watching the, watching the tour. And I always feel like once they come out to an event, um, hopefully, you know, when, <laughs> when all of these no fan events, um, wrap up and we're able to have fans again. You know, once we get once we get the people in the gates, they're usually fans for life because our players are are just incredible, um, really personable, kind, um, giving of their time, and, and fun to watch. I mean, it's, it's incredible golf. So once we get people tuned in, we usually uh, we have a great great fan base on the LPGA, and our goal is just to continue to grow that. 
Does it surprise you that something as simple as a, a hooded sweatshirt has brought so much light to the LPGA? I mean, it's really, really cool. There's some yeah. superstar athletes and, and personalities and celebrities that are that are, are globbing on to this cause, yes, and also the LPGA. The, the, the hoodie is, is incredible. Um, is it surprising? Is it frustrating? Or is it exciting that something as simple as a piece of clothing can bring so much attention to, uh, to the LPGA? I think it's exciting. I think, um, you know, social media is a powerful tool and to be able to use that, um, to really resonate with people, um, especially outside of golf. You know, I mean, most of my feed is filled with, with golf. And so if we can pull outside of golf to promote the LPGA and, and honestly just promote women's sport, I think, um, to see, top athletes in all sports, especially male athletes really promote the LPGA and women's women's sports in general. It's, it's very helpful for all of us. Morgan, speaking of uh, raising a lot of money, uh, the Morgan Pressel foundation is an amazing foundation you started and you've raised millions of dollars helping fight cancer. Uh, tell us a little bit about it and, and how can people get involved? Yeah, it's, um, thank you. It's been about 14 years now since um, we had our first Morgan and Friends Fight Cancer Tournament here at St. Andrew's Country Club. And we have raised about $10 million over the last 14 years to benefit breast cancer initiatives here right in our backyard with Boca Raton Regional Hospital and Sylvester Cancer Center. And it's really amazing. Uh, it's almost fully supported by the community here at St. Andrew's Country Club. I'm very lucky to have an incredible group of friends and extended family here that, that knew my mother. My mother passed away when she was 44, when I was 14 from breast cancer. And, and so it's all done in her name and in her honor. And it's very special to me. I obviously, I love to play golf and, and I love um, competing, but, you know, nothing really means more to me than to be able to get back to our community right here in our backyard. And, and I love traveling the world and telling my story and encouraging, encouraging women all over the world to stay up on their health, uh, to get their mammograms. Um, you know, with COVID, a lot of women kind of delayed their mammograms because they're afraid to go into the hospitals or whatever it might be. And, and unfortunately breast cancer doesn't wait for a pandemic either. So you know, here's my message to your female viewers that, you know, if you haven't gotten here, if you've delayed your mammogram, go get it. Don't wait. Uh, waiting and, and waiting usually does not end well. Let's put it that way. You don't, you'd rather catch it early than wait too long and, um, and find it too late. Well, it's, a, it's, it's really exciting what you're doing there. MorganPressleFoundation.com for more information uh, on how to get involved with, uh, with your foundation. Again, MorganPressleFoundation.com. Uh, Morgan, even with all your success over the last 20 years, can you still identify with the idea that every golfer has a little bit of stick and a little bit of hack in them? <laughs> totally. I feel like a hack every day. <laughs> uh, I might not look like one but for me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it goes back to what we talked about earlier with that like yeah. perfectionist, super self-critical um, thing. But yeah, I mean, every golfer has strengths. Every golfer has weaknesses. There's always things that can be improved. Um, and sometimes that's just your mental game. Sometimes you're a mental hack more than you are a physical <laughs> hack. That's, and sometimes you're both. Okay. Oh, I see some finger pointing there. Oh, oh, oh. Sometimes you're both. Um, Morgan Pressel, the guest here on the Stick and Act Show. Morgan, thank you so much for your time. You, uh, you've been an incredible guest, incredible interview, uh, continued success. We do have a couple more things for you, though. Uh, would you like to stick around and play Stick or Hack? Oh, look at the dog. Let's do it. We got a I'm dog. Zoe. This, Zoe this, this might be the first ever uh, dog appearance on the Stick and Hack Show as well. It's been way, over, hi, way, over, way overdue. Right. If you're only <laughs> listening to this, shame on you. Go to YouTube and watch it because uh, Morgan's dog is, uh, is adorable. I love uh, it. All right, Morgan, we'll be back with you in here in just a second for a sticker hack, all right? All right. So, uh, Mike, uh, takeaway here, Morgan Pressel. Uh, I mean, where I don't even know where you begin. Yeah. Uh, she's had an incredible career, number one. Um, and I, for me, I, I love um, – I love the idea of her foundation and how much money they've been able to raise for breast cancer. That's just 
to me is, is really amazing. And I know that, uh, she has a very personal, uh, connection to that. So for me, that's the, the best takeaway there is, uh, just making sure for all women out there, get your mammogram. So uh, my takeaway is, is that perfection line that she kept going back to. And, and it, it's so funny to hear a LPGA professional, a broadcaster, a, someone who was in the U S open at the age of 12 say that she has a hack and that she's yeah. a hack. It's first of all, that doesn't bode well for my actual <laughs> hack, but there, there is this sense in, in golf of, of the, of the perfect shot, the perfect placement, the perfect putt, the perfect speed, all that stuff. Um, but then there's that other side where she obviously, she takes it seriously, but she also has fun with it. And she just understands that at the end of the day, this is not life or death. This is golf. This is the, the careers that she's chosen. Um, but just knowing knowing kids' age between that, because mine are, are 14 to, to 9, knowing how their minds are and what they think about and what's important to them, the fact that she was on the world stage <laughs> and, and the U.S. Yeah. Open and, and, and starting her career in golf and all those, those titles, it's such a fun career to go back and, and, and witness and, and, and know about. So uh, just very, very excited that, uh, that Morgan was on the show, and she's back now for Sticker Hack. Morgan Pressel, uh, let's play Sticker Hack. Are you ready? Maddie. All right, so uh, the category here is Morgan Freeman movies. Morgan Pressel, the guest. <laughs> Morgan Freeman movies, uh, the sticker hack. You are the best. Thank you. Yeah, I good will job. finish good job, your dude. compliment. Thank you. Uh, all right, so uh, it's very simple. Uh, this is sticker hack, and I'm going to go through this list of movies. All right, we're going to start with, uh, with Morgan. We'll go to Mike and then myself. All right, so uh, sticker hack, Morgan Freeman movies, the bucket list. What's that about? <laughs> See, all right, this is perfect. What's that about? Is that, is that, is that terrible? No, it's fine. It's I'm fine. Not a movie watcher. So She's so not I'm, a movie watcher. This, this list is going to be tough for me. I think that's great news. <laughs> I love it, <laughs> Mike. It's stick for me. All right, hack for me. It's that's the the end of the road for for Arkin and and uh, Jack and all those guys. I mean, come on, it's Jack Nicholson. I understand who it is, but that that's kind of why it's hacky. And Morgan Freeman. It's kind of why it's hacky. It's like uh, uh, the the red movies. After after a while, they're all the old people come in there. Like I, we get it. You got to keep your your electricity on, but oh, let's do something else. Like Driving Miss Daisy. Sticker hack. Got it. See? See? Well, Morgan Freeman's amazing. They've all got to be sick. They've all got to be sick. I'm See? just, I'm not going to embarrass that was, That's where I was going. That was where I was going. It's Morgan Freeman. They're all stick. But. Okay. How, about, how about March of the Penguins? Is that on your list? Well, let's that's just, let's stick. just slow down a little bit, Morgan. Let's just slow down. Okay. Uh, Mike, uh, driving Miss Daisy. Stick your hack. Uh, hack for me. Right. At the time, I thought it was hack when I was younger and when that movie came out. I'm like, yeah. why do I care about this guy driving this old lady around? Yeah. And fi- uh, come to find out, it's a fantastic movie with a great, great moral, moral purpose. Sure. Stick. Because I, I have a heart. Okay. Uh, seven. <laughs> the movie Seven? Brad, Not the, nothing. Brad Pitt. Okay. Brad Pitt, Morgan Brad Pitt, Freeman, Morgan one of the greatest movies of all time. Kevin Spacey, uh, go ahead. Maybe we'll just stick. cut Morgan out of this entire thing. Stick. <laughs> incredible. Like, stick. The movie, it's, it's just right. it's incredible. Stick. Stick all the way. Incredible movie. Uh, the Dark Knight. Let's just uh, go to Mike first. And we'll just and you just pipe in, Morgan, whenever you know one of these movies and would like to participate. Okay? Is that I fair? have seen The Dark Knight. Right. That's a great movie. See? I have seen The Dark Knight. Perfect. Stick. Stick. Stick, that, stick for me. That's a great movie. Stick right. for me. Stick all the way around. Uh, now You See Me. Matt, no, you got nothing over I've... there. So it's, it's Woody Harrelson, it's uh, Morgan Freeman, uh, Mark uh, uh, Gruffalo. Oh, uh, the the hack. magician, the magician. Yeah, hack. I'm out. No, no way. <laughs> all right, I say stick. Now you see me too is hack. Now you see me is because no. first of all they should have called it. Now you see me again. That was a miss. It's a ridiculous concept on the on the second <laughs> one. It's a ridiculous concept. Four Mag- four magicians running around the world doing magic right. tricks. Eisenberg. What, what, are, what are we? What? All right. Uh, kiss the girls. Sticker hack. No. Morgan Freeman movies. That's uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Jud, uh, Jude Law. That's not right. Uh, Ashley Judd. I've Ashley seen, Judd. And, and I, I never saw that. Right, so. That's a stick movie. That's Hack one of those. That's one of those late nineties thrillers. Uh, Morgan Pressel. Do you got anything there? Kiss the girls. No. Okay. Yeah. See, I didn't. Bruce I, Almighty. Hack. Bruce Almighty. Nope. Nothing. See. Is she still on the phone? Shane? <laughs> um, <laughs> Bruce Almighty is uh, is is stick. I, I really enjoyed that movie. I enjoyed his his uh, performance there as God. Uh, Glory, stick. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, 
uh, st- we're gonna we're gonna vote for you, Morgan. I think I think I've seen I think I've seen Glory. Right. I think I've seen that movie. Yeah. All right, stick uh, <laughs> going in style. Sticker hack Morgan Freeman movies. Never seen it. it that's another old 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 timer also old guy. That's De Niro, it. and and it's awful. Hack. Yeah. And should never. Have, it should have been straight to VHS when that was a thing. <laughs> Uh, and we're gonna put we're gonna put a hack vote for Morgan there. Uh, all right, uh, sticker hack Morgan Freeman movies uh, with Morgan Pressel, Shawshank Redemption, sticker hack. <laughs> have you ever seen? Embarrassingly, that? I have never seen that movie. Yes, this is, this is pathetic. This is, uh, no, 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 no. This no, no. is really pathetic. No, Morgan, this is an ongoing this is an ongoing issue on our show. Adam has never seen this movie, and it is. The greatest movie ever made. Morgan and I finally have something in common. <laughs> and that's exciting. Stick. <laughs> it's stick. Um, Morgan Pressel. MorganPresselFoundation.com. You can uh, visit our Instagram or Twitter at Impressel. Uh, a, a very great show, Morgan. Thanks so much for the time here on the Stick and Act program. Continued success out on the LPGA. Continued success as you are embarking your broadcast career. And, uh, and we hope to, to see you again. And perhaps you can give me that bunker lesson that you promised me on the show live that we have on tape. <laughs> I'm in. All right. Sounds good. I'm Thank in. You. Thanks for having me. Guys. Uh, all right. Thanks. thanks, Morgan. See you later. Uh, there she goes, Morgan Pressel. It's a great show. Mike, uh, stickandact.com. Become a free member of the world's greatest golf club today without the course. And watch your life change in front of your eyes. It won't change your game, but it'll change your life. That is Stick and Hack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying it. I'm throwing it out. Proud of you, buddy. Thank you. Proud of you. Later, everybody. Peace out, guys. Okay, we're done. This has been the Stick and Hack Show. Go to stickandhack.com to become a free member of the world's greatest golf club without the course.